friends, hello and welcome back. MLB The Show has officially come out this year and I thought let's go ahead take a peek at some overalls. Yeah, we'll start with my Reds, Tyler Stevenson topping the Reds team with that 81 overall. Alexi Diaz with the 80. All right, that just means my Reds got some room to grow, um, SDS. I understand. I got you. Yeah, yeah. TJ Friedel with a 70. TJ Antone's getting robbed of that 71. That guy's a stud. What has TJ Antone done not to deserve a better overall? 2.14, 2.8. You're right. Did I miss something? That's just disrespectful. It's all right. It's all right. We'll be okay. We'll be all right. Be uh, Red's going to bounce back. I am still in football season, by the way. I apologize when we call baseball football about 85 times this year. Uh, we're working into it. I'm pretty excited about this, by the way. We haven't done... Um, Hey, I think it's been two years. We might have did a little bit last year. It's been two years, though, I'm pretty sure. I don't think we played baseball start last season. As far as putting videos on YouTube, we played baseball later in the season last year. Really enjoyed it, though. I think this year, you know, the game plan was a little bit different. I said, hey, uh, typically, I'm I'm really cautious of making MLB The Show videos because, I mean, and quite frankly, we're a hockey channel, and a lot of people just don't, they, they, they don't watch both. And I never like throwing that content out there to people that don't like watching. I always feel like it's, I mean, honestly, in it, it's tough to watch when you like make content and everybody unsubscribes and nobody likes it. So it's like, I don't want to force this out here. But I think I've gotten to the point now where I, I certainly just enjoy doing YouTube in general for fun. And I'm not like focused on trying to make the gaming portion of my YouTube channels a career as much as just doing it as something I love and enjoy to do. And I know, you know, we're doing the YouTube channel with the uh, the Ohio Legacy where we talk about all the Ohio sports, whether it be Reds, Bengals, whatever. I really enjoy doing that in general. I think that's kind of where I take a lot of my free time now. But I still enjoy doing this stuff for fun. And I think the thing is, it's like with baseball, it's just it's something different in March. I can't play hockey all year. I, I can't play baseball. I'm just the type of person that I, I need change. I'm going to play baseball for a few months. I'll play another game for a few months. I might take a break for a few months. So personally... That, that's what's going on with me uh, if you're new to the channel and you're here in this sphere like what's going on here i apologize just if you know, you've been watching the channel for a while i know when you start seeing a different genre of games come up you're like what's going on here so i just kind of wanted to explain that to y'all if you do watch the baseball and the hockey videos or if you just watch one or the other i still appreciate it uh we're gonna try to we're gonna try to run through this though and just see kind of what happens uh manny machado's got the 95 this year 88 for Juan soto xander bogart's got the 86 though most go. I mean, this Padres lineup is just nasty. I feel like the Padres are a team that they, they just continue to bring player after player. I didn't realize Matt Carpenter was 37. Not Lee Cruz. I didn't realize he was on a Padres either. Mitch Hanager out there, Logan Webb, uh, Camille Duvall, Alex Wood. Speaking of guys that are still around, I thought he was 32. I thought he was older than that when he played for the Reds. I thought he was 30, 31 when he played for that. That was a few years ago. Felix Batista. That's my fantasy player, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, we finished our fantasy baseball draft. And it was, I personally, I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, Quentin's not very good at fantasy baseball. It, it's been a very long time. We do the uh, the pro leagues in Yahoo or whatever. So it's paid where it's a little bit more competitive. But ever since we started doing the paid leagues in Yahoo, it's been a struggle. We're talking like bottom three in fantasy struggle. I don't, I don't know what it is, but we went to things this year with a different approach. Went after some home run hitters. And went after some young studs that can steal some bags to see if it's just a little bit different compared to, I think what we normally do is just try to find balance. But it's like when you play fantasy baseball, especially in the week to week stuff, it's all about getting that guy that can just carry you for the week. You don't want the balance. You want the guy that can hit eight home runs or three home runs and four home runs in a week or steal four bags kind of deal. And we brought that up because there was that. We took that approach. But we also said for some reason it just turned out to be this way where we took players on average to the blow up blow average seems all over the place for some reason i was joking around it's like it's a good thing like plus minus or something ain't a thing in this sport we have a problem yandy diaz christian Betancourt, yanni chinios still solid overalls as well there for these tampa bay Rays. i love the race the Rays are one of my favorite teams outside the reds just for the pure fact that they continue to do it every single year on a low budget like that impresses me and i love it uh vladdy jr alex manoa George Springer, Kevin Gosman, Alejandro Kirk, uh, the Tam or Toronto Blue Jays have themselves some players. Matty Chapman. Bo Bichette's going to start in 84. Speaking of fantasy players, he's still a top 10 pick this year. They're expecting him to bounce back. I, I think I I'm curious with Bo Bichette how he did do. He's 25. Uh, this is a guy at 24 home runs, 29 home runs, under 12 guys. I mean, they're going to pull the fences in. 
I don't know if he ever gets back to stolen bases. He, he might. He might. I, I always think the thing is when you're a solid and a really good player, like as the years come, the stolen bases drop, they're not coming back. And mainly because te- your, your team just doesn't want to force you to run anymore because it's so, uh, you know, dangerous. There's a risk of you getting hurt. And the risk reward of you stealing that bag compared to you being on the line or you being on a team, it's just not there when you're a high profile player. Tarek Skubal, speaking of high profile players, talking about him coming back sometime soon here. Uh, Michael Lorenzen. Oh, baby. You talk about Michael Lorenzen, a Blue Jay or Reds legend, Michael Lorenzen, Eduardo Rodriguez, Casey Maez, uh, Kerry Carpenter up there. How about the top prospect? Oh, I mean, not the top prospect, the all star. Miguel Cabrera topping it in at 68 overall. What does he got about a two speed this year? Five. I- I'm pretty sure it's gotten better. I'm be honest. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they used to have Miguel Cabrera at like a two or a one or something. Maybe that's Diamond Dynasty. And it's different. I always thought it was great though. He isn't the fastest of guys, but that's the one thing I've always really loved about MLB the show is they 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 give you true overalls. I guess when we play a lot of hockey, they don't really they don't really use the overall system properly in my opinion. Where they're like, well, if you're the best at a position, you're 99. Or if you're really bad, you're the worst. You get a one overall, or you get a two, not a one overall, but a one rating or a two rating. That's the thing with Megan's like. One of the slowest players in baseball. You don't give that guy like a 35 speed. You give him like a two. That's what he gets. I love that. I love that about their rating system. Or, if, you know, again, like the player's the best player, in the, best player on the planet. Give them 99. Oh, yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, Donovan Solano. Man, I, I like Donovan Solano. I liked his time at the Reds. I, w- I wish he could have been a guy that stuck around. Uh, Houston. Jordan Alvarez, Jose Altuve, Kyle Tucker. Here's the World Series champ looking team right here. Christian Javier, Ryan Presley, Alex Bregman, Lance McCullers. Josue Abreu, Jeremy Pena, and this team is just loaded from top to bottom, and there's a reason they are where they are right now. Uh, Michael Brantley, you talk about loaded. I mean, Michael Brantley comes back healthy. He's a solid player. Corey Lee, Hunter Brown, uh, the top prospect there, according to this game. Uh, Mauricio Dubon, not too bad there. Maldonado in there. Shohei plays both positions, and he is a 99 overall in this game. Speaking of guys that deserve it, there's nobody that's better. In my opinion, in this game today, we talk about five tool players. How about how about a 10 tool player? Because he can do it in both sides of the field. Gotta love some Otani here. Now 28 years old. Mike Fish, still gonna get a high overall as well. A 99 overall. Now, here's the question with Mike Trout. How did he do last season? He stole one bag. He stole two the year before. He's batting 283. This is going to be a really controversial, interesting question. I be the show is very, 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 very good at updating their overalls year after year and basing last year so strongly on the overalls. And my question now becomes, does Mike Trout still deserve the 99 overall in this game at 31 years old? Uh, the stealing probably shouldn't be a 27 now that he's not stealing any bags at all. Is the speed still around at 90? Is he just not as fast at 31 years overall? The power versus the right is the contact versus the right. I mean, the guy's still, he's raking. We got to keep in mind, this guy did not play a full season last year. You know, 119 games, 40 home runs. I, he was on pace to be about a 50-55 home run hitter. When you say that, and you bat him 283, I mean, oh, yeah, there's a lot of good reason you keep him at that 99 overall still. Oh, another ex-red, Brandon Drury, Patrick Sandoval, Anthony Rendon. Can he get things right for the Angels? There's been nothing but injuries for this guy. Man, I love Anthony Rendon. Very big fan of that guy on the Nationals. It's just been, it's it's been unfortunate. It's been kind of sad to see that he came over here to the Angels, made all that money, but he couldn't really put the, that put that product on the field. Good for him for getting that bag, but it would have been interesting to see Anthony Rendon, the version that carried the Washington Nationals to a championship, on the Angels alongside Mike Trout. That would have been nasty. Uh, Julio Rodriguez, young stud, eighty nine overall. Louis Castillo, Reds legend. Louis Castillo, speaking of which. Speaking of the Reds, here's the Seattle Reds. We got a lot of them on this team, I believe. You got to scroll on the list to find them. A. Eugenio Suarez. Suarez actually got an 80 overall, interestingly enough. It's that speed, or not that speed, that power. He's got Colton Wong, 32 years young these days. Cole Calhoun, uh, Justice Sheffield, moving over to the Texas Rangers. Now, newly acquired. Speaking of guys that deserve the 99 and has proven, not proven otherwise, a Jacob DeGrom. And this guy, he did have a 3.08 ERA. Did he really? There was a point, like, I think he got hurt was the thing. There was a point, maybe he had one bad outing. There was a point, where I thought he was still, even though he didn't play, he was nasty all year. Uh, typical Jacob DeGrom kind of thing. Marcus Semyon, Adolis Garcia, Nath- Nathaniel Lowe, Corey Seager coming in at the 85 for the Texas Rangers. Texas is going to be a tough team this season, I think. Especially if they can get Jacob DeGrom to stay healthy. 
Like, that's a, that is a game changer for your team if I ever seen one. Spencer Strider, the young stud, coming in at 94. Speaking of the young stud, I mean, that's what you just, just, you just say about this entire Atlanta Braves team. It's impressive how young this team is, how much they have uh, these players locked down. And what's even more impressive is the fact that you're seeing, you're seeing competitions in spring training with really good players that are prospects coming through the system, didn't play all of last season, that are they're good players. And the Braves are like, I, they're, he's fighting for a job here. Like, man, they got all these guys, young guys locked out, and they're having a hard time finding a spot for some of these other young studs. It's crazy. That, that Braves team's got something figured out right now. They're going to they're gonna be scary for a while. Uh, moving to the Mets, Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer. The Mets going with the veteran stud pitchers in Verlander and Scherzer at 38 and 40 years young. Diaz, Pisto, Pete. Petey's due for that contract this year, right? Uh, that's going to be an interesting to see. With them home runs he hits, he's going he's gonna to get some money. We're going to go over to the uh, Bre- uh, the, 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 the Phillies. We're going to go to the Phillies. Bryce Harper's got the 95 this year. Triple air, that's where he belongs. Uh, JT Romuto, Zach Wheeler has actually been... Zach Wheeler has been nasty for this team, has he not? 2.8 ERA, 2.7. He's been really good ever since he left New York, which is surprising. Some people just can't play in New York. They can't play in that environment. Or maybe, you know, with the Philly, they had a better pitching... Uh, I want to say pitching staff, but maybe a better coaching staff that figured something out, something that was wrong with his mechanism. Maybe he just figured it out on his own. But ever since coming to Philly, Zach Wheeler went from like a 3-4 to a 1-2. Uh, looking at the Nationals, speaking of the Nationals, losing a lot of players. Steven Strasburg still out there, 34 years young. Lane Thomas. It's some promise in that guy right there. Kyle Finnegan. Uh, Josiah Gray. Another team that it, it gets thin really quick, much like my Reds, where the, the the roster gets thin really quick, but that's okay. You, I love it. You got a chance to bring some of these young guys. Out. Victor Robles is only 25. Some of these guys make me feel young. That's great. Victor Robles is only 25. <laughs> Danzy Swan's in out there. Best player on the Chicago Cubs this season. Cody Bellinger making the team. Uh, Michael Fulmer. Michael Fulmer. There's a name. Speaking of guys that make me feel young, he's only 30. I remember he was a fantasy darling one year. I had to be like a try. If he's 30, I got to be like 19 or so. <laughs> Maybe not. Tyler Stevenson, back to the Reds. All right, so that wraps up the ratings here. Uh, I just realized we went down to all lists instead of the players earlier. Oh, no, we didn't. That was right. But I just realized we might have went through, through some players early there quickly. So we just we'll, we'll skim through the damn the video. But that's going to wrap things up for this video. As always, if you guys enjoyed it, I always appreciate you consider liking the video, subscribing. You never have to. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time.